What's going on, everyone? We are back with a new series on the channel. We're gonna do a Let's Play Human Paladin Hardcore Edition. So we're playing WoW Classic here, and we're playing Hardcore. So this basically means if I die, my character gets deleted. So we're in for a little bit of fun here, but let's start by creating the Paladin here. So, um, I don't know, we'll go with a slightly bronzed character here. Uh, a blue-eyed fella, sure. What kind of hairstyle do we want to rock on our paladin? Uh, maybe a kind of long-haired warrior, sure. And we'll go with uh, a wizened kind of white hair here, as we are a, uh, a warrior of the light. Okay, here he is with a little bit of a goatee, and we're gonna call him Gerald. Let's see if we can actually lock down this name. I knew the chances were gonna be tough. Uh, a warrior of the light. How about we go with something a little bit more kind of um, holy, I don't know. All right, we've secured the name Immerse because we are about to be immersing ourselves into this experience. So let's go ahead and enter the world. And let's just kind of soak in this intro. The noble humans of Stormwind are a proud, tenacious race. Though the recent invasion of the demonic Burning Legion decimated their sister kingdom of Lordaeron, the defenders of Stormwind stand vigilant against any who would threaten the sanctity of their lands. Nestled in the foothills of Elwyn Forest, Stormwind City is one of the last bastions of human power in the world. Ruled by the Child King, Anduin Rin, the people of Stormwind remain steadfast in their commitment to the Grand Alliance. Backed by their stalwart allies, the armies of Stormwind have been called away to fight the savage horde on distant battlefields. With the armies gone, the defense of Stormwind now falls to its proud citizens. You must defend the kingdom against the foul mongrels that encroach upon it and hunt down the subversive traitors who seek to destroy it from within. Now is the time for heroes. Now humanity's greatest chapter can be told. And there we go. So you can see here the rules to Classic Hardcore. So let's just go over these for anybody who hasn't heard about Classic or is new to the channel or just needs a refresher. So we are playing solo, so we don't need to worry about party here. Uh, but here are the basic rules. Uh, do they actually have them listed out here? Turns out they don't actually have them listed out, but let me explain to you the rules. Um, I'm gonna hide re uh, details. Uh oh, that's apparently not hideable. <laughs> oh, we have a death log. Okay, interesting, that's new. Um, so the way it works is if we die, we delete our character. Now we can't use things like the auction house, we can't trade with other players, we can only run each dungeon once. There's a number of rules which you can find online, but that's how we're gonna play this game. So we're gonna very much play this as though we're existing in the world. Every threat is a real threat, and um, it's gonna make this experience a lot of fun. I've tried this before, it's a ton of fun, and I figured I'd bring you guys along for the trip, and we can kind of take in WoW as it's meant to be played. All right, so let's begin the immersion experience. Let's see what we've got going on. Now, there's always a few things I like to do when I start. I'm going to turn on things like auto loot. Uh, we have a lot of settings here. I'm gonna turn on auto loot. I will turn on my action bars. Sorry, just some of the um, kind of quick mechanics we like to do at the beginning. And then let's check out what skills we have to start off. So this, again, an immersive gameplay. So we're gonna take it a little bit slower than you might normally. We're gonna take in the quests and kind of experience the game, like I said, as it's meant to be played, because typically I fly through this a little too quick. So for skills, we've got Holy Light, we have a heal. I'm gonna drop that over to number five on my taskbar. We have Seal of Righteousness. Fills the Paladin with Holy Spirit for 30 seconds, granting each melee attack an additional one to four holy damage, so a buff on our damage. Slower weapons cause more holy damage per swing. Only one seal can be used per time. So we're likely to get more seals as we play here. 
and that lasts for 30 seconds. We're just gonna wanna keep that active at all times. Might make sense to just keep that on our toolbar down here. And then we finally have a uh, auto attack. Do we have a passive, or sorry, a racial? We do. Perception, dramatically increased stealth detection for 20 seconds. Great. So let's jump in and let's make it happen. Hey there. A threat within. I hope you strapped your belt on tight, young paladin, because there's work to be done here in Northshire. And I don't mean farming. The Stormwind Guards are hard-pressed to keep the peace here, with so many of us in distant lands and so many threats pressing close. And so we're enlisting the aid of anyone willing to defend their home and their alliance. If you're here to answer the call, then speak with my superior, Marshal McBride. He's inside the abbey behind me. Safe Great. travels. So we are coming in as just an ardent defender. We're ready to help protect the people of Azeroth. And so let's see what the uh, what the marshal has to say to well us. Well met. Ah, good. Another volunteer. We're getting a lot of you these days. I hope it's enough. The human lands are threatened from without, and so many of our forces have been marshaled abroad. This in turn leaves room for corrupt and lawless groups to thrive within our borders. It is a many-fronted battle we wage, Immerse. Gird yourself for a long campaign. I'm prepared for this. We're level one. We're, we're beginning the campaign immensely. Your first task is one of cleansing. A clan of kobolds have infested the woods of the north. Go there and fight the kobold vermin you find. Reduce their numbers so that we... So that we... Wow. <laughs> so that we may one day drive them from Northshire. Be careful. So I need to kill ten kobold vermin. Now, do we have another quest inside of here? Not quite yet. So we will, uh, oh, we do have one here. You so we'll pick up something? our quest first. What can I do for you? Egan Peltskinner's looking for someone to hunt wolves for him. That's good news, because we're seeing a lot more wolves in Northshire Valley lately. If you're interested, then speak with Egan. He's around the side of the abbey to the left. Have a good one. Can do. And I, perfect. All right. Let's check out what is going on from Egan. And there sure are a lot of wolves. I'm excited to get hunting. Hello. Well, that's true. I'm looking for someone to hunt me some wolves. Are you that person? Sure. I hate those nasty timber wolves, but I sure like eating wolf steaks. Bring me tough wolf meat, and I'll exchange it for something you'll find useful. Tough wolf meat is gathered from hunting the timber wolves and young wolves wandering the north side, Northshire countryside. See you around. All right, let's make it happen. So we need to hunt cobalt and wolves. And we have basically... Um, just an auto attack, so we can swing and use our mace. So, we're playing, obviously, um, I, I've done a couple of these immersive playthroughs, and I've done them, if you've checked them out, I typically have done them in Retail WoW, which is a little bit faster paced. With, uh, with WoW Classic, we're certainly gonna be moving at a slower pace, so we'll have a little bit more time to talk, tell stories, discuss some of what's going on through the playthrough. And of course, we're gonna be reading through the quest text, we're gonna be taking in the story, because again, a lot of you may have played the human starting area, but you may have burned through it, not really thought about what it was you're actually doing. So we'll kind of take in those stories and see what's going on. And the story as it exists right now is, um, you know, we have arrived, they're calling for help to defend against the horde, the invasion, of, uh, of Azeroth, and so we are going to be one of those folks who's going to come and help assist in the battle. What I like about Classic WoW is it's it's really a game of you aren't this super-powered hero. You're just a citizen. You're out there. You're ready to play. Uh, you want to help the people, and you want to take on uh, take on some enemies and assist, and so that's who we are. We're nothing crazy. We're just uh, just someone here ready to help contribute. And we're starting very modestly by fighting some wolves and by fighting some local cobalt. And that's going to be level two. Which is fantastic. You do love to see that. Now, those workers aren't what we want to kill. We actually want to find the vermin, which I believe are the smaller cobalts uh, running around like this little fella. We get nothing at level two, it seems. I'd be curious for folks in the, uh, we did get some male pants there and we do have a cloak. So we're starting to get a little bit of gear. Bag, bags will be a problem. 
I'm curious if folks have tried out Hardcore WoW. I, like I said, have played it um, a little bit. I think the highest I've gotten is maybe level 20 on a character, but I think it's just a great deal of fun. It really takes you back to the way the game's meant to be played. A, a game of adventure, a game of exploration, not just min-maxing and burning through the content. And that's how we're gonna play this game. So if you're into that type of thing, uh, then you found the right video. If you're into more of a quick paced, let's get to level 60 as fast as possible, this might not be the video for you. So I'd love to just warn you of that ahead of time even though, you know, we're we're well into the video already. Now, Dan's here is taking on quite a few mobs. Uh, there are, what I'm liking about this, this is Bloodsail Buccaneers server. What I like about Hardcore WoW 2 is it's really bolstered the community and most people are coming to this server. So you're actually seeing a lot of people around, which makes it a little bit hard to tag mobs, but it is, um, it is pretty exciting and fun to have a lot of people around playing the game, being part of the adventure. And maybe we'll get crazy here and see if we can uh, kind of handle two mobs. Now what's nice about the Paladin is we do have a heal, which is a real safety mechanic in, uh, in Hardcore WoW. I've been trying to think about what the optimal length of time for these episodes is. Let me know down below if you think it's 20 minutes, half an hour, a full hour. I mean, it doesn't it doesn't matter to me, um, but some people prefer to sit through smaller chunks as opposed to large chunks. Or you could always hop back in and check it out if you're along for the ride with me. Uh, I finished the wolf quest here, so I might have might have tagged a couple too many, but we're gonna finish up with the uh, the vermin. Grabbed another one. I'm trying to um, turn on the. There we go. So the only problem with the paladin is we don't currently have a ranged attack, so it's a little bit hard to tag mobs sometimes when there's this many people around. But it seems like they've increased the rate of spawning, so it's not too bad. But we do need to find these vermin. They're not the easiest to find. They're actually relatively tough to come upon. Yeah, a couple over here. If I can get that tag, that'd be huge. And maybe I'll try to tag a couple of these. Great. I should be able to take on two level ones here. I don't think that'll be an issue for us. down him. We actually need 10 of these, which <clears throat> isn't a problem. We're collecting quite a, quite a bit of loot along the way too, which I have no complaints about. Always nice to kind of bolster your, your gear early on. One thing I love about Classic WoW is that everything goes so far. A white piece of gear, incredible. In, in retail, you wouldn't even think about it, but it's pretty exciting when something small like that, like your first green piece, is so critically important to get and makes such a huge difference. I find that really fun because every little step of the journey is a big step. I just, I feel like that's a little bit lost in retail. This quest always does trip me up because these guys are just a little bit smaller than the workers. And so I'll run around and I'll kill a bunch of workers and think, why have I only killed, you know, three of the 10? And then I realize I'm killing the wrong ones. These workers do not count for the quest. Though I might as well kill these while I wait for spawns because I could use the experience. I think I will. So I'm pretty much just auto-attacking, keeping my Seal of Righteousness up, and uh, that's about all I can do so far. Looking forward to some of the new skills we're gonna acquire. Oh. 
The, uh, the thing about Classic WoW as well is that when the game was developed initially, they actually didn't put enough quests into the game. And the reason for that was the game was kind of going off of an old method of gameplay. So they were cop not copying, but they were following the trajectory of games like EverQuest, Dark Age of Camelot. And in those games, the leveling process was a really grindy experience where you would just kind of run around and kill mobs like this to get your experience. There weren't a lot of quests. And so, ooh, I'm gonna lose one of these tags? No. And so, um, the game early on just didn't have enough quests to carry you through, and then they realized that people wanted to do the questing part of the game. They liked that. It was a little bit faster, it was a little bit more enticing than just killing mobs over and over. And so they started to implement in more quests, and now you of course have the, there's level three. You of course have the experience um, as it is today, which is a lot of questing. Oh man, people are stealing kills. Get the hit off. Um, it, it, there's a lot more questing now, but back in the day it wasn't. So while I'm playing this, there will be times that I have to go around <clears throat> and kind of just grind mobs like this, where I have to travel from one zone to another, and it will be a little bit, um, a little bit disjarring, a little bit, or disjointed is probably the better word, but that's how the experience was. And so we want to play it like it truly was back in 04, 05, 06 even. And I'm going to take you through that journey. So let's go ahead and turn these quests in. Egan Peltskinner, he'll be happy Good about day this. Good to you. You've been busy. I can't wait to cook up that wolf meat. I have some things here you might want to take a peek. Take your pick. Uh... I guess the zoo would later. do. Egan Peltskinner. I'm going to sell some stuff too. Because I am just a little bit overloaded on gear. King's honor, friend. We'll repair. We'll sell the candles, boots. Sell it all if it's seemingly not helpful to me. I'm actually going to just get rid of that stuff. Greetings. Well done, citizen. Those kobolds are thieves and cowards, but in large numbers they pose a threat to us, and the humans of Stormwind do not need another threat. For defeating them, you have my gratitude. I was asked to bring this to your attention as soon as you returned from the kobold camp, Samurs. It appears to be a letter sealed with the insignia of Brother Samuel, our local paladin trainer. I wouldn't hesitate to read it before you go about any other business here in the Abbey. Light okay. bless you. Let's have a look then. I hope this letter finds you well, Paladin. I say that with great pride, because not many can profess such profound faith, but also know that they are among the most elite of Azeroth's protectors. Always remember, first and foremost, it is your duty to go to battle against those who seek to harm our world and bring corruption into our homes. I've been given authority over your training for the time being. When you're ready, seek me out inside Northshire Abbey. Great. Need help? We're also going to investigate Echo Ridge. My scouts tell me that the cobalt infestation is larger than we had thought. A group of cobalt workers is camped near the Echo Ridge mine to the north. Go to the mine and remove them. We know there are at least ten. Kill them, see if there are more, and then report back to me. Go with honor, friend. Can do, so let's actually find that paladin trainer. I'd love to see what we can acquire for new skills. Brother oh, Samuel, friend. there he is. King's honor, friend. Ah, see, I have an auto quest complete thing on that I don't want. Let me, um, let me turn that off because it's not letting me read all this stuff. How would I do that? There we go. Finally, we meet face to face, brother. I welcome you to Northshire. This will be your home for a short time while we learn the ins and outs of how things are done. But know that Stormwind is not far off and sooner or later your path will take you there. But until then, be patient, Knight of the Silver Hand. In the meantime, you should know one or two other things. You are a symbol to many here in this land. Act accordingly. The holy light shines within you, and it will be obvious to both your allies and your enemies. Also, as you gain wisdom and power, you will need to train to learn new abilities. That's where I come in. When you feel you've gained some experience here in Northshire, come back to me, and I'll teach you what I feel you are ready to learn. 
Good luck, Paladin. Be careful. Light okay. be with you. So we're actually going to learn Devotion Aura. Gives 55 additional armor to party members within 30 yards. So it's a party buff. Players may only have one aura on per Paladin any one time. Light bless you. Love that. That's just going to give me a little bit more protection. Oh, that's already up there. And that just stays on, which is fantastic. I do like that about, you get that in uh, Diablo as well with the Paladins. They have these auras, so they sort of give off a buff just by you being around them, which is very cool. <clears throat> and we report back to Deputy Willem. How are you? Recently, a new group of thieves has been hanging around Northshire. They call themselves the Defias Brotherhood and have been seen across the river to the east. I don't know what they're up to, but I'm sure it's not good. Bring me the bandanas they wear, and I'll reward you with a weapon. A new weapon Safe travel. sounds fantastic. Let's, uh... I almost want to start with that and get the weapon. Is that risky? That might be risky. We'll start in the order they gave it to us. We'll go to the, uh, the Echo Ridge uh, Cobalt Workers first. We also now have the... The buff of Devotion Aura, so the increase in armor is going to be very helpful. So I'm seeing a lot of folks dying here in the Hardcore Death Log, which you really, you really hate to see. The highest so far being level 20, that would be, that would be painful. That's a lot of, uh, that's a lot of time committed to then, to then not make it. So I feel for that fella. All right, now we're looking for the workers. So these were the kobolds that we were not trying to kill before. We now are. And here's one right now. These are just a little bit stronger. So it's gonna be really nice when we get that new weapon. But if I can just take out 10 of these and work my way towards the Defias, we will be in very good shape. I do really love seeing other folks around. It gives it a feeling of, I guess, community. I mean, that's what you lose in sort of the retail version of the game, is you lose that community. And so we're getting that here, no question. People are around, people are chatting, people are in guilds. My combat is so utterly slow at this phase of the game, just because this is all I have, is my auto attack. But we're pushing. I am getting some chain gear. Those gloves will be helpful. I do really like playing a, a male plate character, because I do think the gear looks really great. Especially early on, it's significantly better than the cloth gear. So I got a belt, I got some gloves, and we are taking shape here. Alright, just need a couple more, still chipping away. Guys, don't be afraid to uh, hit that like button, subscribe to the channel if you're enjoying this content. It really, really does help me. It, uh, it, it encourages me to be pushing out content for you guys. I have a lot of fun doing this. So um, definitely don't, don't hold back from that. I do appreciate it so much. And drop me a comment in the chat. I love to respond to comments, get some conversations going, talk about the game, talk about um, just kind of the experience, talk about hardcore WoW, which is really, really hot right now. Um, yeah, so, so feel free to leave a comment. I'll try to uh, get right back to you. I've also got a link down below to a Patreon channel. Um, if you want to support even just five bucks, um, it helps me make sure that I can keep these videos, the content running for you. No pressure, just leaving it there in case there's any interest. All right, we just need one more of these workers and we can then head east and tackle the Defias Brotherhood, who we have a whole story about that might have to come in another episode. What I love about the Defias Brotherhood is you're introduced to them here, right at the beginning, level three, and uh, 
The story continues until the end of the Dead Mines via Westfall. So it's a multi-zone storyline ending in a dungeon boss that takes you to about level 2022. It's really, really well done. It's kind of the first phase of the game. It's one of my favorite phases of the game, and I think kind of the Defia storyline is really fantastic. I'd love to take this character through that entire arc. We'll see how it plays out. Need help? What the heck? For the Alliance, that can't be King's right. Honor, friend. I don't like hearing of all these kobolds in our mine. No good can come of this. Here, take this as payment. And when you're ready, speak to me again. I would like you to go back to the mines one more time. Your previous investigations are proof that the Echo Ridge mine needs purging. Return to the mine and help clear it of kobolds. Waste no time, Immerse. The longer the kobolds are left unmolested in the mine, the deeper a foothold they gain in Northshire. So I need to go and go kill 12 water, laborers friend. now. All right, I kind of want to go kill the uh, the Defias first so I can come back, get a weapon, and then kind of push my way through the mines. I think, that, I think that's exactly what we're going to do. So my quest here for the... Um, for the Defias is to get, what, 12 bandanas? Can do. A fellow mage over here. A lot of people actually hunting over here now. I believe there may be, are there casters in this bunch? I don't, I guess not. That would be a concern if there were, but these mobs can aggro. One thing I do want to do is just grab a screenshot um, for the thumbnail of this, but I'll do that in a little bit. Alright, let's see if we can hold up against two Defias Thugs. Get our buffs up, we're gonna hit level 4 real quick. Nice. So far, so good. Holding strong against the Defias. Now, are we getting Mandanus? We haven't gotten any yet. Which is really a tragedy. Just in some sort of uh, farm or vineyard here. I don't I don't totally know. Oh yeah, Northshire Vineyards. Alright, great. We got one bandana of 12. So that is another thing, and I'll, I'll constantly kind of talk about a comparison of Classic and Retail WoW. But in Classic WoW, you don't always get the loot you need. I mean, you might kill something and have a 60-75% chance to get the loot drop you need. But it's not a 100% chance, which in Retail it very often is pretty much a 100% chance to get the loot drop you need. It wasn't back in the day, and I think that relates back to what I was saying earlier about how the game was a really grindy game. You needed to kill a lot of mobs. They wanted you to go around killing mobs, and that's how you would gain experience. And that was the name of the game. And so you weren't going to get the loot drop on every kill. That would have been too fast. You wouldn't kill enough things. You wouldn't get enough experience. So I believe that's kind of how that all played out and why you're not seeing loot on every drop. So instead of having to kill 12 of these to get the 12 bandanas, I might have to kill 20 or 30. I can't wait to get a couple more skills though because the auto attack is so bland. There's just not a lot happening, you know? I'm gonna have to uh, cast a heal here shortly. All right, that's four of 12. So we've got quite a bit more to go. But these are spawning very quickly, which makes this process better with so many people running around. If we were doing this and waiting for mobs, it's... That can slow things down a little bit. 
Now, of course, it should lighten up as we get further here, uh, assuming we survive, because as people die, of course, they start new characters, so the beginning zones get very, very crowded. Nice. It feels really good when you get the loot. <laughs> I have to admit. And getting a new weapon as a paladin or a warrior, or someone who's very weapon dependent, is so critical because that DPS increase just is makes you so much stronger. Let's see what we got. I love these the uh, like porta potty outhouses out here. Cracks me up. Like some like these guys are storming the vineyard, but they gotta stop in quickly. Makes me laugh. There's some funny details in the game if you wander around. If you really keep your eyes open on what's going on. We're getting there here. Great when you're a rogue because you can actually loot um, at certain points when you kill some of these Defias. You can loot their masks and wear it. It's rogue only, but it's such a cool option for a look. I wish it wasn't just rogues. I guess that makes it kind of fun to be a rogue, though. Kind of their signature thing, the burlap bandana. And we're getting very close on this. We just need three more. We're starting to hit a stride now. I've been wondering if it makes sense to try to stream some of these episodes too. I'd be curious if you guys enjoy that type of thing or if you prefer it to be kind of a self-contained YouTube video episode. Uh, let me know your thoughts on that if you made it this far. I'd love to know because it would be fun to kind of stream and be able to interact with some of you while I'm playing, have conversations based on your questions live and in the moment. Um, so yeah, let me know. All right, just two more. And then we get ourselves a new weapon. I believe we get a big hammer. Like, it looks like a legitimate hammer. As opposed to this wooden mallet. The sounds of Elwyn Forest make me so happy. This little scarecrow with the pumpkin head. No, don't take my kill. <laughs> no. All right, hopefully this guy gives us the uh, one of the last ones we need. Ooh, a big crit there, 23 damage. We'll get a heal before we take on these two mobs, which could be interesting. Because we could pull that third, and that is very scary when you're talking about a hardcore scenario. Oh, and there's one right behind us. And suddenly no people around. So this is gonna be, this will be interesting. All right, on to the next. Start dealing damage to him. One of these guys surely is gonna drop our 12th bandana. Awesome, there it is. Okay. Let's head on back and turn this in and get ourselves a weapon. Northshire Abbey. What a beautiful spot. What is it? I think that's the same sound that that guy makes as Warcraft 3. If you ever played Warcraft 3, they make those little noises. Hey there. Have you gathered those bandanas for me yet? Back with some banan bandanas, I see. The Stormwind Army appreciates her help. So I can get a Militia Hammer, which is three to six damage, 
two DPS, or a Militia Warhammer, which is a two hand, six to nine damage. It's gonna increase our DPS by just about double, which is really great. So let's get that. Oh man, I'm so much more powerful. So I'm gonna grab these quests. I'm gonna call that an episode. We'll grab those quests in the next episode. Um, and we'll take on the mine over here. But again, go ahead and like the video if you're enjoying, subscribe to the channel, and we'll be back with a whole bunch more. We'll continue this series of Hardcore WoW. I appreciate you guys so much. We'll talk to you in the next one.